Now, in AP Physics 1, it's important to define the three different types of collisions that you're responsible for being aware of and the three types of collisions that we can categorize any collision to be a part of. Now, the way this works, and I've drawn a sort of a flow chart here to talk about um, the differences between these three different types of collisions. The number one differentiator and the, the main difference between these two overall types of collisions is whether or not kinetic energy is conserved. And so we've already talked about how momentum is conserved in a collision. But kinetic energy is not always conserved. And you can imagine why. If you've ever heard or seen two objects collide, you've heard a sound or you've seen them deform in some way. When two cars collide, there's often a lot of deformation, metals bending, and you hear a loud sound. And so the energy of those cars is leaving the cars and moving into the surrounding. And so most collisions do not conserve kinetic energy. And so um, the most common category here would be when kinetic energy is not conserved, right? That is the most common type of collision. And within that branch, uh, for collisions where kinetic energy is not conserved, there are two specific kinds of collisions. The one where two objects stick together, we call perfectly inelastic. So this is a type of collision where after the collision, the two objects have stuck together and are moving as one object. You can think about this like a football player tackling another football player. Um, after the collision, they are traveling towards the ground together as one object. The other kind of collision when kinetic energy is not conserved is just inelastic, right? So perfectly inelastic is a special condition where they stick together. Most collisions are inelastic. In other words, Kinetic energy is not conserved, and the objects don't stick together afterwards. Um, playing pool or billiards is a great example of that. You can hear the sound of the balls striking each other, um, so you know that kinetic energy is not conserved, but nothing's sticking together after they move. They're all going in separate directions, essentially. So most collisions are inelastic, and some collisions are perfectly inelastic. But overall, in this category, um, I would say most collisions in real life uh, fall into one of these two, perfectly inelastic or inelastic. Kinetic energy is very rarely conserved in a collision. So we call this very special condition when kinetic energy is conserved, over here on the other side of this flowchart, we call that an elastic collision. All right, and again, this is not typical of most collisions. Most collisions do not conserve kinetic energy. You can kind of think about this like the magnetic bumpers on our smart carts, or like a bumper cars you've ever been to, like an amusement park or not spray farm. You've probably been on bumper cars, and, and that's somewhat of an elastic collision. Again, kinetic energy there is probably not being conserved, but it's as uh, close as we'll get. So kinetic energy is the differentiating factor between inelastic and perfectly inelastic and elastic collisions. It's either elastic or it is one of the two types of inelastic collisions, depending on how the objects are moving together after the collision. However, it is true for all of these collisions that even though kinetic energy may or may not be conserved, momentum is, and that is something that we can count on. So as we've discussed before, momentum is the property that is conserved in a collision, not kinetic energy. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not, and we can categorize the collision as such if we know whether or not kinetic energy is being conserved. All right, please take a moment and review these definitions as you will often be asked about this on exams in our class and, and on the AP exam.